Hey everyone, I'm Courtney and today we are talking about makeup for senior portraits. If you're just starting to think about what you want your senior portraits to look like, this video will be good to help you figure out what you want to do for your makeup. The first video focused on styling and choosing the setting of your senior portrait. So if you want to go back and watch that one and read the blog post first, you could do that if you're just starting at square one. This is a video that will help you decide what to do for your makeup. Now the first step before you decide what products to buy or if you want to go with a makeup artist is to decide what you want to look like. Now um, this could be anything from something really trendy to something really classic to whatever really says you because your senior portraits are a great way to really express who you are. These portraits you know aren't as serious as say wedding photos. So basically what you could do is just look through your favorite magazines and anything that catches your eye as far as makeup goes, just rip it out of the magazine and you can keep it in a folder or binder. Um, I keep all the makeup looks I like in a book. Um, and you could kind of see them here, like more natural look, dark lips. And then this way you could kind of just keep a journal. And when it comes time to do something like your senior portraits, you know, you pretty much already have a resource where you can basically copy these photos yourself or take it to a makeup artist and say, I really like this on this woman. I really want my eyelashes to look like that. So you have reference points. You're not starting from square one, which could be really hard. So the first step is to decide whether or not you want to do your own makeup or have someone else do it for you. Now, let's start with the easier one first in that if you know someone who does makeup really well, if this is a mom, sister, brother, whoever, um, you can ask them to do your makeup. Second idea is to go with a professional makeup artist. This is obviously going to be a little bit more expensive than asking a friend, but you could do it. A cheaper option to that is going to a department store like say, Macy's or JCPenney and going to the makeup counter and then on the day of your senior portraits go to that makeup um, counter and have your makeup done. Now if you don't want someone else to do your makeup and you prefer to do it yourself you kind of have to think about what do I know about makeup? Can I do this? Will it look good? And if you don't know how that's cool too. Don't worry there's lots and lots of books to help you out. Um, these are two of my favorites. This is Bobbi Brown's Beauty Evolution, and this is more just on the basics of makeup. If you're just starting out, these are really good um, tips to know about like what kinds of products you should be using. A book like Face Forward by Kevin Aquan. This is actually going to be more step-by-step -step tutorials, um, and this is basically going to help guide you through how to do your makeup. So you can basically flip through here. There's a bunch of different looks. And then basically you follow the instructions. The third option, obviously, is to, you know, ask friends or look on YouTube. There's probably like a million makeup tutorials on YouTube. So if you're totally lost between this book and this book and all the magazines, you know, go online, see what's out there, see if anything catches your eye. Okay, so once you have an idea in mind for how you want to look on your senior portraits, um, you basically want to start gathering products. If you want a more tan look, I would not recommend going to a tanning bed because it's just not healthy for you. So what I would recommend looking for is a good self tanner. You could go on MakeupAlley.com and look up any product that you're thinking about buying and read reviews. Um, Jurgen's Natural Glow got really good reviews and this is a product that basically uh, makes your skin look tanner over time. So if you do want a tanner look, two to three shades darker than your natural skin color, you want to start early because you don't want that color to come from your makeup. You want it to kind of come from your skin. So a product that is a gradual self tanner that's going to darken your skin, not right away, but over time, is more beneficial than basically buying makeup that is three shades darker and then applying that on the day of. Now keep in mind if you are using a self tanner, you're going to want to wait to buy your foundation because your color of your foundation from when you start with the self tanner say a month before the pictures to the day of your skin's going to be a different colors so you might want to wait until a week before to buy your foundation you want to pick something that works for you you can either start off by looking in the drugstore with popular brands like you know Revlon Maybelline whatever if you know something that works for you stick with it don't try to you know venture out too far but if you're not sure 
what exactly works, you might want to actually consider going to the department store and have someone walk you through it because it could be kind of a tricky process to pick out a foundation color for the first time. So that's an easier way to do it. Now keep in mind that most drugstores do take returns. The next thing you're going to need to use after you have foundation on is concealer. And basically what concealer does is it gives extra coverage to any redness or dark spots that you have underneath your eyes. But if you have good skin, don't worry about it. You probably need to use a light to medium coverage concealer, if any at all. Then what you're going to want to do is top off your um, concealer and foundation with a powder. And this is going to make your makeup last longer and also prevent any shine. And this is basically just a translucent powder. After that, you're going to want to think about what kinds of eyeshadows you want. So say for example you're in a situation where your parents really want a natural look but maybe you want something a little bit more funky. You can start off with natural colors and basically do your first look in this, right? And then when you go to the shoot, make sure you bring any brushes that you're going to need, maybe a mirror. And then after you do your natural look, you can kind of spice it up a little bit with some purples or any colorful um, eyeshadows that you like. You should start with a natural look first because it's going to be easier to transition into something that's more colorful, whereas it's harder to take color off um, once you have it on. So you're not going to want to redo your whole look. Um, you basically are going to want to add more colors to it. Then the next essential item to looking really great for your senior photos is mascara. This is just going to make your eyes look a lot larger. It's going to give your lashes extension. You don't necessarily have to wear false lashes. Next thing you're going to want to use is blush. On the apples of your cheeks, perhaps even up to your cheekbone, basically try to stay in this area. And you're going to want to use more natural colors, so maybe something more on the pink side or on the peach side. These colors down here are more for contouring. And if you're new to makeup, don't worry about that. Just kind of focus on making your cheeks look really healthy. Don't overdo it, though. The last thing you're going to want to think about is what you want on your lips. Now, like I said, if you're more of like a funky lip person, you're going to want to go with, you know, like a dark red or maybe even purple, something orange. But if you're a more classic look, you're going to want to start with maybe a light pink. And again, if your parents want a more natural look, lip color is a really quick way to change it into something more dramatic. So you could basically just wipe off the natural lipstick and just put, you know, maybe a darker gloss or a lip, you know, red lipstick on. And those are the essentials of what you need for your makeup now. Certainly there's a lot of products out there that you could be using, but these are the basics for what you need to look good in makeup for photography. Now, after you've gotten all your products and you kind of know what you want to do for your look, you're going to want to take pictures and do a trial run by yourself before you show up to see your portraits because something that looks good in the mirror may not always look good in pictures. Eyeliner thickly applied can make your eyes actually look a lot smaller so in photography and for your portraits you probably want to stay away from this because your eyes are going to actually end up looking smaller. It's not going to do you a lot of favor. If anything, only apply it very lightly. Um, you could put eyeliner on the top but I would recommend staying away from it on the bottom. So I hope this video gave you some ideas to start thinking about what you want to do for your senior portrait makeup. Like I said, just play around, see what works for you. What works for you may not work for someone else. Make sure you take pictures. Make sure you start collecting early and please do not overdo it with a tanner. <laughs> you want to look natural and beautiful, not look snooky. So I hope you enjoyed this and best of luck on your senior portraits. I know you're going to look great.